Good evening, Nini. Thank you for coming on Sports Talk with C. How you doing? Doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good this evening. Kind of hot, but I'm enjoying it because we're about to get some rain for two weeks. So I'm soaking all this heat up. Mm, it's been raining a lot down here in Atlanta, so I understand. Well, I, when I was there, it was nice and sunny, so I I I enjoyed that sun while I was there because it was cold here in Rhode Island when I was up there. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us who you are and where you're from. So my name is Carnethia Brown, but I go by Nene. I'm born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes, I did read that. So what was it like growing up there in the basketball cu culture in Kentucky? Oh, it was so much fun. Well, I didn't really get into the basketball culture until I was maybe in high school that's when I started to play AAU um so I did play organized ball in school but it was never really serious so I actually took it started taking it serious like eighth grade going into freshman year of high school so um once I started AAU it was lit like everyone was amazing I had a good time um luckily the people that were above me they were actually really good basketball players so they taught me so much um on my AAU team so yeah it was lit what is one of the biggest things you can say with like AAU then to AAU now? Uh, AAU then in Louisville was very aggressive. I know as far as my AAU coach, like he didn't play a lot of back talk, walking up the court, um, parents in the stands. Like he didn't play. It was a lot of stuff that he didn't really play about. So now it's like the game has been softened um to you know go with the feelings of the basketball player which is understandable but it's completely different now from when I was playing and do you feel like the parents control a lot of what goes on their kids playing time um mm -hmm. if they're gonna come off the bench if they're gonna be starting and if that doesn't happen do you think parents like pull their kids too fast from yeah. programs um, I do think um, as far as the athletes, parents do have a lot of say so as far as what they do, where they go and how they play. Um, but depending on the coach, um, some of the coaches really don't care about what the parents say. If your your, your child is good, they're good. If not, they need help, you know, this and the third. But um, I do feel like nowadays parents do have a strong, a stronger um a stronger impact as far as what school, the what team the, the child play for, what school they go to. And if they're not performing the way they they feel like they should be performing, they'll pull them and put them on another team. So I feel like nowadays the parents do have more control over what goes on. And when you speak about coaching, just your experience, um, can you just speak to how important it is to have a coach that invests in you on and off the court? <sighs> Having a coach that invests, like, that sees you for you and not just a basketball player is amazing. Um, Again, I started playing basketball, well, AAU when I was in high school. My AAU coach, I've only had one. Um, If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be where I am now. He actually took the time to understand me as a person and as a player on and off the court, which made playing for him a lot easier as I got older. Um, So having a coach that believes in you and see you for you and not just somebody that can score – or play defense is is life changing. I know that's right because some of these coaches, I'd be like, "What are you doing?" Yes. But you know, <laughs> it's crazy stuff. But yeah, and getting them only to a D one school, and that's it. Um, and speaking about Literally. like schooling and college and stuff, how was your process in picking um a college or university or your route that you went for your next level in basketball? Um. My process was pretty easy. Um, my coach was big on, okay, D1 is amazing. You know, a lot of people that do go, great, but that's not the only option. Um, so, again, if it wasn't for that, man, I honestly don't know where I'd be because in my head, I'm like, oh, I got to go D1. Um, but my decision was to go Division One JUCO. So I went to mm -hmm. a school, a small school in Moberly, um, just to get more fundamental, get the dog back in me from being um, a small town in Louisville. So... Yes. So my 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 transition from AAU to college was very different. It was very smooth. Um, I went to Division One JUCO, Mobile Area Community College. Um, graduated from there. Best decision of my life. I'm glad I actually went to that school. Um, wow. and then I went D one. So that's kind of how my process went. And when you say like fundamentals, and you got the dog back into you, can you just elaborate more on like what is the difference on going like a D one JUCO and then off to a D one school? Um, so JUCO teaches you how to humble yourself. 
um, mm -hmm. as far as playing basketball, because you leave high school, you could be the top person there, but JUCO is literally you you win or you lose. You only have two years to figure out what you want to do. So you don't have three years, four years to, okay, well, I got another year left. No, you have two years to figure out what you want to do and how good you want to be at basketball. Um, so because I was on that time frame and on that time that, that time schedule, I was able to become more fundamentally sound in basketball with my coach, of course, and my other teammates. Um, and best decision of my life again. So, yeah. And can you just speak to how important it is to be always to be a student of the game of basketball? You got to stay a student of the game, no matter how good you feel like you are, how much you know, stay a student of the game. You can always learn something else. If you are a point guard, you can always become a better point guard than you was the year before than you are now. If you're a shooting guard, you can always become a better shooting guard by watching film, watching other players, listen to your coach, listen to teammates, like always be willing to learn from other people that have been in position you are or want to go where you went or somebody that is where you want to be so always be willing to listen and learn with an open open eyes open heart open mind um don't take nothing personal everything is business when it comes to basketball oh you heard that guys everything is business don't take it personal um, don't take it personal <laughs> that's that's hard for some people that's hard for a lot of people mm -hmm. Um, when you jumped, you said you went to a division one school after what was the school and did you have any hard challenges from going to Juco into division one? And if so, what were they and how did you get through them? Yeah. So when, once I left Moberly, I went to, um, I went to, um, Alabama A&M University, mm -hmm. um, great school, great coach. My biggest problem was going from Juco to division one, the pace, the mm. pace, the pace pace you have to practice like you play that's really true practice like you play no matter what go hard practicing working out warming up whatever so when you do play the transition is so much easier so that was that was kind of my problem when once I transitioned to division one easy fix um because division one do start in June when you go work out I mean you go June July August so that also helped me propel myself throughout the season and being in Division One, how would you describe your game in one word when you were playing? At uh, how would I describe my my game in one word? Mm -hmm. Dog. I had to become a dog. I actually learned how to become a better shooter at Division One. That's when I became a shooter. Ooh. So my junior year, when I became a shooter. I had to become a dog because I'm not the I'm not the tallest. Um, at the time, I wasn't the quickest. So. My coach literally found something in my game that I already had and perfected it to a craft. Oh, I know that's right. So if you were, you know, you sense you're a shooter. So do you like the fact that the game has been more shooting wise, you know, since Steph Curry came and changed the game? Mm -hmm. uh, y yes and no. Yes and no. Only because <laughs> now... <laughs> only because now everybody live and die by the three-pointer mm -hmm. like yeah it's good oh hey yeah we made a three but there's a mid-range and there are layups so once you get the, once the three-pointer became like oh once you keep extending yeah that's cool and all but if you miss six of them it's kind of take to the basket it's time to learn that's my yeah. type of game so if you were had this if it was you and you had the last shot you take what are you taking a layup a mid-range are you going for the three I'm going for the three but <laughs> Just to win, it depends. Balls in my hand, and they say we're trying to win. I'm definitely gonna go for a three. See, what happened? What's going on? No, go for the. It depends. If, if we're down one, of course I'm gonna try to you know do a mid range shot, you know. But if we're down two, come on, why well, tired? <laughs> and if you um, when you first started playing um basketball AU and in high school, was there anyone that you felt? that you mimic their game, looked up to their game or anything like that? Um, see, my the way I figured out basketball, because I live in Louisville, Angel McCartney. I didn't really Ooh. know much about the WNBA. I didn't really know much about anything as far as just Louisville basketball. And Angel McCartney was the player. So growing up, I mimicked her attitude-wise, aggression. I just tried to just be like her as much as possible. 
I love that. That's what's up. Because you're not, you know, a lot of people still currently learn in the W and a lot of, mm -hmm. I always get AI, Colb, MJ. Yeah. So it's it's really good to hear, um, Angel. I love that. And currently, what's going on and what are you currently, um, you, you, I know you're still a pro baller, but what is currently doing? Um, currently, as far as basketball, I play for two teams here in Atlanta. I play for a team in the WABA. It's called the Atlanta Angels. Um, and I play in the AEBL as well for a team called the Bands, B-A-N-S. Um, and then working my way up to get back overseas in the next few months or so. Do you like being overseas? I, I really enjoyed it. My first year was amazing, but I was lucky enough to go to a country. I went to Ireland, so they speak mm -hmm. English. Um, very nice people, very welcoming. So I was lucky enough to be around a, a town and people that actually spoke English. So I didn't really have to adjust much other than to the weather. It was really cold there. Um, yeah, it was freezing there. But other than that, I was lucky enough to be on a team with a program that actually like fed into me for my first year, showed me different things and actually believed in what I can do. And even if I did have a bad game, they wasn't like, oh, well, we you have to go. You know, so I, I was lucky enough. <laughs> To be a part of a good team and a program that actually was like, okay, we actually like you here. So let's continue to make you better. That's what's up. And what would you say is the biggest difference from like their style of play to the style of play over here? Oh, the uh, great. Like they don't call no fouls. Over <laughs> I say no fouls, no fouls. Like you literally have to get tackled in order for the referee to look at you and be like, okay, you probably did get fouled right there. Like, so the aggression, the style of play is very different. It's very fundamentally sound overseas. Like, no, they're not the fastest. They're not the quickest. They can't jump very high, but they know how to score. So you have to learn how to adjust overseas to how they play. And then once you do that, it's a breeze. But then that just brings out the dog in you even more. And Hello? then you come and then you can become a killer shooter. And then you're good. Ma yes, ma'am. <laughs> so what do you have plans for like the next five years? Um, do you still want to continue basketball or do you want to do something else? Um, of course, I still want to continue basketball, but I'm more so tapping into my personal training. Um, I love to train kids on the side as well. Fundamentals as far as skills and teaching them how to shoot, dribble and whatnot. But I do want to tap more into my personal training because I feel like the only way athletes can get better is if they have a stronger coach um, conditioning wise. People, mm. a, lot of, a lot of kids don't condition a lot. A lot of people don't condition the proper way so that's kind of where I'm starting to lean towards to now because I am a personal trainer um so that's kind of where my life is going to start leading towards in the next five years oh that's what's up I hate I don't like trainers because I like to do the gym at my own pace my own <laughs> way don't push me if I'm done I'm done <laughs> you know but for all those people out there that need a trainer, make sure you hit up, you know, Nini. She got you. Yes, yeah. um, one more thing before I let you go. When you hear the word basketball, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Dedication. Basketball Ooh. is a game. Like, you can play basketball for fun, of course, you know. But if you really want to, you have to be dedicated to it. It's nothing easy that comes with basketball. Everything you do when it comes to basketball, each step, you have to earn it. Nothing is ever going to be given to you. So you have to be dedicated to the process. It's hard. It's draining sometimes. But at the end, it's all worth it. Yes, it is. Well, I thank you, Nini, for coming in and chopping it up with your girl and sharing your journey with me. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. And um, thank you again. We finally got it done, guys. It took a little yes. bit, but I finally got you on. <laughs> thank you. No problem. Thank you for having me. Of course. Have a good night. Soon.